Step one, wake up early, gon' rise with the sun. Step two, get some good, some food in you. Step three, think grow hard about what you wanna be. Step four, fuck everybody, just do your thing. Wake up, today's gonna be a good day. 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 Wake up. Today's gonna be a good day. Wake up. Today's gonna be a good day. Wake up. Today's gonna be a good day. Yo, set your affirmations, aspirations. I got shit to do. The aftermath of preparation. Good food, good mood, blood in circulation. One step at a time. Yeah, that's how you make it. Set a goal you control, and the steps you take them. I try to pick one thought, have some concentration. And if I make a mistake, it's called education. I try to do this every day, call it replication. Wake up, today's gonna be a good day. 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 Today's gonna be a good day. Wake up. Today's gonna be a good day. So life ain't easy, yo. I think there's a reason, though. Ups and downs, just like every different season, yo. Sometimes I'm high, other times I'm barely breathing, though. I like, always gotta fight and hide from the demons, yo. Negative thoughts are poison, they ride. Uh. Head full of flaws, so here come the clouds. Uh. They'll never stop unless I can swap all the bad for the good in my head when I'm lost. Uh. Yeah, so I'ma fake it till I make it Positive thoughts are overtaken, I got patience One day at a time is how you operate a cadence A flow, you grow, you show yourself a foundation Stay away from all the shit that causes temptation I know that I like to do it cause of sensation I live my life in my head like a narration Don't expect greatness, do my best, man, I'll take it Wake up, today's gonna be a good day Wake up Today's gonna be a good day. Wake up. 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 Today's gonna be a good day. Tom, it's just a tough subject. A recent study by Brown University showed that nearly 450 children are killed each year by their parents. My daughters were picked up on a Friday by their father to spend the weekend. And that night he um, pumped carbon monoxide into their bedroom and slit their throats. This has begun for two children killed by their mother in Pickens County. Nine-year-old Hayden King was laid to rest today. Hayden's four-year-old sister Harper will have a celebration of life service tomorrow morning. Here's a story that's breaking at six o'clock. It's all centered around the three people you see on your screen. The key pieces in a Middletown murder case. On the left is James Hutchinson. Police say the six-year-old was killed allegedly by his own mother. East Los Angeles mother was charged today with killing her three young children. The youngest was less than two months old. At six with breaking news. Good evening to your friends, Greg Merriweather, along with Elizabeth Bow. Our top story today: that precious little two-year-old right now. Two people are facing charges, accused of murdering little Nebea Allen. Investigators found the two-year-old dead in Mississippi after several days of searching. One of those blamed in her death, the girl's mother, Lania Cardwell.
Sebastian Rogers is a 15-year-old autistic boy that went missing from Sumner County, Tennessee, Hendersonville, Tennessee, on February 26th, the same day that Madeline Soto disappeared from Kissimmee, Florida. This is a case where this 15-year-old autistic boy allegedly got up in the middle of the night and walked out his door and never was seen again. Many people that have uh, autistic children understand that this is a weird um, analysis of what could happen, especially when you have an autistic child that is not a runner, always has his feet covered. Let's leave it like that. He always puts something on his feet to go outside and he just vanishes. There were uh, videos that went out that said that something was flashlights in their backyard. People are looking at the stepfather, Chris, Christopher Proudfoot, because he's had DCS in his life in the past. He's going through a custody battle in New Mexico, uh, which has allegations of spousal and domestic violence abuses inside the home. The Sumner County residents are calling on extra resources uh, to help search and aid in Sebastian's um, return. Nobody knows where Sebastian is. We've got people out. Um, many people believe Chris Proudfoot has something to do with it. So they're running along his path of travel to find out anything, any possible dumping sites for Sebastian. We know we just had the Cajun Navy over there at Riley Strain's case and a TikToker with 92,000 followers is begging for the Cajun Navy to get involved in this case as well. So is it possible? Could Christopher Proudfoot be associated with this? Did he come home that weekend? He's saying that he stayed in Memphis the entire weekend and never came back home uh, to his wife or his stepson. Uh, what is your thoughts on this case? I am going out there sometime next week to start aiding in the efforts uh, for the search, as well as bringing my platform to bring awareness to his case. I hope you guys support those efforts and I will see you guys real soon. From the East Coast to the West Coast, we are everywhere true crime is. We are asking for the public's help. We are searching in the woods. We are doing what it takes here on the Bullhorn Betty channels to find answers to the most alarming cases we have been watching on the news. I can tell you personally that I have traveled this entire country seeking these answers and bringing that content right here to you here on the Bullhorn Betty channels and Bullhorn Betty crime stories. We are happy with the work that we've done. We brought many answers to the public and we have defied mainstream media in our pursuit of the truth in these cases. We will continue to work we will continue to fight for these victims and we will continue to tell their stories here on my channels. Welcome to the Bullhorn Betty brand of channels and the coffee club. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your support. And more importantly, thank you for allowing me to bring these victims stories to each and every one of you advocating for each of these victims. God bless you. God bless America. And more importantly, God bless our victims. Well, good morning, my beautiful people of YouTube and X. Bullhorn Betty is up for this beautiful Manic Monday, damn it, and you're going to be happy. <laughs> Get your asses up. It's time to start the week. What are you all waiting for? Didn't you guys get filled with the Holy Spirit yesterday? You should guys be up dancing this morning, dancing on the rooftops with your bullhorns. Your bullhorns. <laughs> it's nice to see everyone this beautiful morning. We're going to take a few moments to do our daily cases. This is from yesterday because I haven't done deal with it. Like it. Damn it. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. So this is my Reader's Digest version of our daily breaking case updates. And we're going to be starting out this morning with Michael Monkey Vaughn. Michael Monkey Vaughn is a little boy that went missing 
on July 27th, 2021, shortly after the Summer Wells case. Stacy and Sarah Wandra, neighbors on the other side of his development, have come under heavy fire from law enforcement because they believe they know exactly what happened to Michael Monkey Vaughn. To this day, nobody has been arrested in connection with his disappearance or his death. Rex Hureman is on the chopping block today. We're discussing him. We haven't discussed him in a while. This is the Gilgo Beach serial, K-I-L-L-E-R, right? So he has uh, been accused of unaliving four sex workers back in 2000, late 2000s, and now he is in jail. But here's the kicker. His wife divorced him or is in the process of divorcing him rather. And now she is kind of supporting him and seeing him on a weekly basis. Her name is Asa Ellera. And I've got to say, I'm a little perplexed over this. And his victims are Melissa, Megan, Amber, and Maureen. Maureen being the fourth one in the most recent charge that Rex has received. Alec Murdoch is caught lying on the polygraph as part of his plea deal in his financial crimes. He was required to undergo a polygraph test to confirm that what he's saying is true and accurate. Well, he failed, and now the feds want to renege on his plea deal. Brian Koberger, his attorney is doing some wonky stuff, reaching out to the jurors. This is related to the beautiful University of Idaho students that were slain in their off-campus housing. And now the judge is putting a kibosh on Ann C. Taylor reaching out to any further jurors. Volunteers for the Elijah Vu case are hopeful and they are still motivated and they are still searching for him and not giving up hope. Madeline Soto case, no new movement in it. Nobody has been arrested for her disappearance or her brutal unaliving where they found her on the side of the road. Her mom's boyfriend, Stefan Stearns, is still behind bars. Kylie Strain, autopsy was a little weird. Family has ordered a second autopsy. They want to know why his clothes were missing and why there's no water in his lungs. They're still not saying foul play. They just want more details. Lastly is Sebastian Rogers. This is a 15-year-old autistic boy that we have a search party right now searching for his whereabouts. His mom and stepfather have come under heavy scrutiny, but there is no evidence leading anybody to believe anybody is involved or that a crime was committed. However, things are not adding up and we are fighting for any answers and of course to bring Sebastian Rogers home safely. If you enjoy these breaking news updates, please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And if you would really like to help our channel grow, please consider becoming a monthly sponsor with a monthly TikTok subscription. God bless. All right, there you go. There is your breaking news updates for the week. There are a few different additions since yesterday morning, okay? And it's this one right here. You know, we're all about Tupac. Did everybody hear that? I hope I hope the volume was working well on that. Let me see if I got anything saying, hey, muted. <laughs> I didn't even check. And I had to walk away. I walked away because I had to go make more coffee. I'm on the Keurig this morning. I'm on the Keurig. So I was running out. I was running out. I didn't make a pot. I find that with the Keurig, I'm not drinking as much caffeine. When I have a pot of coffee, I just take the pot around with me. I mean, I'm just picking it up like a, like a, you know, like it's a 40 and just go, 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 go. All right. Well, good morning. It's me, Jen. Our beautiful It's Me, Jen is up nice and early this morning telling everybody you better, you better be hitting that like button. So if you haven't already hit the like button, please go out and hit that. So the algorithm picks this channel up. You know, the channel's been struggling a little bit, right? We were down for like three months because of stupid animals here on YouTube. It sucked, right? It sucked. Here's to all the animals on YouTube. And so now we're just now getting up and we're trying to get back in the algorithm. And so now my peeps got to start hitting that like button again, because that's what helps. It helps. People see that and they say, oh, somebody likes Bullhorn Betty. Who knew? <laughs> and, you know, we need some help over here. So get those likes up. If you like Bullhorn Betty, you like what we're doing over here, get those, those likes up. So we got some issues going on. So we'll get over those in a second. Adia, it's nice to see you. Bullhorn Betty's obviously present and jacked up on a 
ton of coffee here this morning. Teresa's up in the house, followed by Turtle Madness, because we are all just mad up in here. Let KK Gongs, it is nice to see you this beautiful, wonderful morning. Mark, by you, babe, speculation station, Teresa. It's nice to see you. We got a Joshua up in the house. Grab yourself a cup of coffee there, Joshua. We're happy you're here. Patricia, our beautiful ICU, reminding us what this is all about this morning. This beautiful 15-year-old boy that needs help. Him and his family needs help. Teresa, I think I said good morning to you. I've got a couple of Teresas in the house this morning. So good morning to both of you. Or all of you, depending on if somebody's out there in the bushes named Teresa. Good morning. While Cherry is stopping by for a little bit of coffee, a little bit of that caffeine, we got, you know, we ain't got a whole lot of it going on around here. You know, we got a little bit of caffeine and a little bit of hugs. That's about all we're dealing over here on the Bullhorn Buddy Channel. That's about all we're dealing over here. So it's nice to see you, Guidance. Mark, good morning. Rich Buddy. Huh? I could use one of those. <laughs> I spend a lot of money and I travel the country. Uh, if you want to throw some, uh, I need a rich buddy. I'm, I'm just saying, I, I, I do, I do. <laughs> you love rich buddies over here on the Bullhorn Buddy Channel. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's nice to see you there, rich buddy. We can always use another one, Obi. <laughs> oh, good lord! I need to, I need to hang it up. I'm done for the day, guys. Great. Thank you for enjoying the show this beautiful Monday morning. You guys have a great day and God bless. God, this Mel B is up in the house. It's nice to see you, Mel B. Kelly Mack. It's nice to see you. Our beautiful Lisa Santana. Look at you, my love. I haven't seen you. I haven't even seen fun size in a while. So it's nice to see you guys. Crafty Chris is up in the house. Good morning. Lori, Kathy, it's nice to see you all here this morning. And anybody else that, oh, I see Pete. Hey, Pete. Anybody else that I missed this morning, you know, it's Manic Monday for Bullhorn Betty, too. You know, my eyes still have crust in them, you know? I've been trying to clean out the crust for a few hours now. It just ain't working. It ain't working. It's like a snotty kid, right? No matter how many times you wipe, they're still snotty. That's my eyes. So, Tupac. Tupac's got some stuff going on here, right? We got we got things going on in the Tupac Shakur case. What? Yes. Did we actually think it wasn't going to happen? We got P. Diddy under investigation, folks. Like, P. Diddy is out there, and he's done some terrible stuff. Look, guys, I'm hearing stuff on the back chats that's enough to make you blush. This man was some type of informant. He was a manhandler for... Hillary Clinton? We know about Hillary Clinton. Remember, there were a lot of people that went, Clink, right? Or that were in and around Hillary Clinton. I wonder if P. Diddy was part of it. Was his crew? Did she hire him? Did she hire him? Was that what happened to Obama's cook? Did P. Diddy go over to Obama's house and start partying? And then all of a sudden, the cook wound up in the pond? I, I just, I'm curious. I'm asking for a few friends. Asking for a few friends. I'm sorry. I don't. Tr I don't understand this politics stuff. Never heard of the stuff in my life. Didn't know this kind of stuff existed. Didn't know they had strong men. They didn't know. I didn't know they had hit men. Hell, I didn't know they had men that set up these little girlfriend events and parties and some unsavory stuff. You know, I approve. So I don't know about all that unsavory stuff. I should. I shouldn't quit. I should quit lying. Right? We know my history. We know my history. I'm approved now. Approved now. Once upon a time. <laughs> Once upon a time. Hey, Diddy, what's up? No, I'm just joking. I'm just joking. So that's what's going on. Everybody's talking about this, these uh, essay allegations related to P. Diddy. And actually, they're not just looking at them for the essay and ST allegations, y'all. They're actually probably looking at him for the Tupac Shakur death because Keefe D kind of spilt the beans and there was a lot of them that were going out and I didn't realize this because notorious B.I.G. right he was everybody thought this was an east coast west coast thing this was retaliation for Tupac and now I'm finding out he might have took his own friend out what yes that's what I'm hearing that is exactly what I'm hearing 
that they're not only investigating him for Tupac Shakur, but also notorious B.I.G. I about fell over. I have to be honest with you. I'm not into the hip hop anymore, right? I think Hollywood has done hit their head and went crazy. I thought that years ago. So I, you know, Hollywood right now is falling apart. I really truly believe Hollywood right now is falling apart. They're falling apart because people aren't buying their, their line of crap anymore. They're not as influential. Why? Because people are tired of their shit and went to social media. You know what happened with news? People got tired of their shit. And guess what? They went to social media. You know what's happening in Hollywood? People are tired of their shit. They're going to social media. They're watching crazy people like me, right? To entertain their souls. To entertain their souls. But um, I, I truly believe we're going to see a lot more unwinding in um, uh, Hollywood. I think that this is something that's been going on for many years. I think this elitism, this um, control that they've been working with for all of these decades, I think are finally coming to an end. I think we did find a lot of stuff uh, with our investigations in 2020, a lot of stuff. Um, I believe P. Diddy, if you want to know my personal opinion, is a political hit. I absolutely do. I think I think it's a political hit because he's been in control for a really long time, helping change the di dynamic and controlling people in there in Hollywood with threats and intimidation for support for certain initiatives, political initiatives. These are hip hop stars. Why in the world are they in politics when they could give to you know what's about it? The reason why I don't like Hollywood is because I think they are the most deranged lunatics of people for our children to be idolizing. I think they're sick in the effing head, if you really want to know my truth. I think there's a very limited amount of people that take their platform seriously. I think it's so very easy that they just dive right in when they are known. They are doing anything and everything willing to keep that control, power, and money. We as normal people are finding that out. We don't, we are denouncing it. We are rebuking the industry. Us, we the people are rebuking the industry. That is why we have people coming out on social media. Think of all the good music we've heard since there's been no gatekeepers. Since social media, people could take their talent take their talent and come here on social media and not have to go and deal with all the chaos of producers, musicians, talent agents. You cut out the middleman. You cut out the control network. You come here, you give your you give your audience what they want to see and you build your platform authentically and from the ground up without all those nasty ass middlemen that tell you men need to wear a dress and, and women Need to go play male sports. All right. Get done with my diatribe. It's time to get on with the Sebastian Rogers case. Sebastian Rogers is a 15-year-old boy. He's an autistic boy that disappeared from Hendersonville, Tennessee on February 26th, or at least we think. There's been a lot of details in this case that really are making us say, hmm, what is going on behind the curtain? We're starting to dive into the life. A lot of people are saying, you know what, let's let's give the step parents a break. Let's just focus on finding Sebastian. By us focusing on the last people that saw Sebastian is helping us find Sebastian because we need to know their whereabouts in order to locate Sebastian. Because let's face it, Sebastian has been taken care of by these very people his entire life. He doesn't go anywhere. He doesn't hang out with friends. He doesn't run away from home. He doesn't go out of his home. He doesn't go down the street without his mommy and daddy knowing where he is at at all times. He does not go to school by himself. He does not walk home by himself. He usually has somebody take him to school and somebody to pick him up every single day. So why, after having such a wonderful weekend... <clears throat> Would Sebastian just decide randomly to walk off? One thing that I've learned about this case is that I don't know anything about this case. And right when I think I do know something about this case, something shows its ugly head or rears its information and it changes the dynamic of this case. But the one thing that hasn't changed the dynamic of this case, in my opinion so far, has been the fact that everything keeps going back to that house and back to his mother and his stepfather. Now, while I'm not pointing the fingers or wagging my um, <clears throat> my um, 
guilty wand at them, I am raising my eyebrow and side-eyeing both Chris Proudfoot and Katie Proudfoot. They were both told, and I heard this, and I hear this multiple times in cases, uh, and I want to make sure that it's clear for the record for anybody that's here. Yeah, there's going to be a lot of people that call uh, families and tell them not to deal with Bullhorn Betty, right? Anytime you receive a call and you hear that you shouldn't be dealing with me, it's because these people think you're guilty. Because if you go back to any and all interviews I have ever done in my life, one thing I don't do is I don't manipulate people's words. I let them say their own words and tell their own story. And I broadcast that usually in raw format to my audience without any edits. Very limited do I ever edit any interview that I have ever possessed. And this is in the history of me doing this very work. So when Chris and um, Katie, and I'm going to say this loud and proud, you are scared of Bullhorn Betty, then you are a guilt. You are guilty of sin. Because I'm a very direct and pointed person. I'm very blunt. I'm very direct. I'm sweet. I'm nice. I'm kind. I care. Um, what one thing I don't do is I don't manipulate. So if you're scared of me. And I just want to put that out there. If you're scared of me, then I'm worried about you. Because the only time parents or anybody is terrified of me is usually if they're guilty. So I want to make sure that that is stated across this platform. Any person that is concerned or worried about interviewing with me is most likely guilty. Because I don't have problems, even with all the people calling and trying to reach out and actually thinking that a parent of a missing child or a dead child really gives a shit about some petty YouTube bullshit. But these these people on the hate channel that people support like you, right? Those awful bitch channels that don't get off their ass to even provide one banner, one flyer. And they could literally have a child missing next door. And I guarantee they wouldn't even get off their ass to go out and put a flyer up on their own electric pole. But they would literally prevent somebody from getting help, real help from somebody that's there, boots on the ground over some petty YouTube bullshit. Do you think these people care about the outcome of the case? Do you think these people care about whether this child is found or not? Do you think these people care? No, they care about their name they care about going against me at all costs they don't care who who they hurt doing it and this are people and channels that you choose to support so i'm hoping that you guys choose a better life and stop supporting these people that literally abuse parents abuse parents when they're going through the worst thing in their life the worst event of their life abuse them how are they abusing them? Because they're calling them and getting them worried when they're already freaking worried about their kid. Do you think they give a shit about YouTube stuff? For the idiots in the freaking back that keep doing this to the parents and keep putting more pressure and hurting them. Oh, they don't care about that. Anybody that knows that these channels are reaching out to these families for petty YouTube bullshit. If you are supporting that, you are supporting the abuse of a victim. And shame on you. And if you don't like me, good. Change the channel because I don't like you if you if you do this type of stuff. I don't support that. Nor do I reach out to these families. Nor do I reach out to these family members. I don't reach out to them. I want to be very clear here. So when people are reaching out to them to abuse them, that's exactly what they are doing. They are reaching out there to hurt them even further. And you guys sit there and support that bullshit. It's sad. I don't reach out to them. Everybody thinks I reach out. I don't reach out to these people. You know how I get my interview? Let me tell you how, let me tell you animals in the back how I get my interviews. They reach out to me. I know you don't understand that because you always have to go get her because nobody knows who you are. Nobody likes you. Nobody knows who these channels are. These echo chambers, these, these little 15,000 channels that are just mean. And bitch, do you think do you think Sebastian Rogers case care? Do you think his father gives a shit? He doesn't. He wants his son. He wants his son. And you know what they're doing? 
we have we have another creator boots on the ground that had been there searching with his father and because of these animals many people went home because of the shit they stirred they stopped these searches they stopped these searches they injured this family and any hate channel that supported this are part of the injury and any of you that support that change the tune because i don't want you being caught up and being part of the injury as well you can't support garbage channels doing horrible things to victims of crime and then expect not to have blood on your hands too we have the entire interview of chris proudfoot and katie proudfoot that very first interview that we had and i want to play it in its entirety it's about 20 something minutes but i think we all need to see it this is the first time i've seen the entire interview i've been on multiple channels maybe somebody has shown it the entire uh interview but i have personally not seen it until yesterday and so when i personally saw it yesterday i thought you know what my audience needs to hear this entire um video they need to hear the entire interview because we're going to go over to Chronicles of Olivia. And I think that that is when the their story changed the most was from this interview here that we're about to play. And the Chronicles of Olivia interview, it seems to me when the most changes happened in the Proudfoot statement when it came to their story about Sebastian. So I'm going to turn it over here, guys. Please stick with me. This is going to be, again, this is a 22-minute interview, and I don't want to interrupt it. I want it to play in its entirety because I don't think my audience has seen it in its entirety. And once we're done with this, I'm going to open up the phone lines. We're going to have a split discussion. We're going to talk about uh, Pascal's uh, interview as well as Rev uh, T. Rev's interview uh, with Seth and some information we've gleaned uh, from those two interviews. It's very important. I want you to look at this stuff. I want you to hear a few things because I think it really does help navigate us through this um, very um, intriguing case that's just ultra sad because we want to have hope for this boy, but it's hard because I really truly feel that Chris did something to him. And I have two theories on why I feel that way. Even though I'm not accusing him, there's just no other explanation in my mind that works other than one of the parents did it. Seth was at work. So that leaves two other people, at least mom and stepdad. Mom, I don't even know what to say with her running off and everything like that. But the stepfather, the scratches. Now, I went back to this interview. I tried to blow it up. I tried to see if people were seeing more into these scratches than, you know, or, 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 or you know, embellishing the photo. And I got to be honest with you. I'm going to be paying attention to here because I've been looking for those scratches, those deep scratches that we've been seeing passed around the internet. I've been looking for those in this interview, and I can't quite see what everybody else is seeing. But you know what? I haven't slowed every piece down to really analyze because where I'm looking at it, he's got a lot of hair on his arms and it's making it difficult for me to see the stuff. I know people say, well, you have to use the filters. Yeah, I get it. I get it. But I don't want filters. I don't want the, the image being modified. I want to see what I need to see with the image as it is and not modified because that's important to me. I don't like modifying images. Um, I do. I do modify images and filter images and change lighting sources but i like to see the origin the origin you know anyways without further ado let's listen to this again i will be back here in about 20 or so minutes i want you guys to take notes and tell me what you guys learned from this interview just express i can't even imagine as a parent what you two are going through how would you describe the situation right now how are you coping <laughs> um, I know I said I wasn't going to interrupt, but it's, it's, it, that very first thing has me like, you're there for your son, your son's missing. And here you are laughing. You don't know what to say. I mean, I understand that having cameras in your face for the first time, it's a very difficult, but she's, she's, she's Navy. Like you should be drill sergeant by now. You know, you should be able to keep a poker face by now. I mean, you were in the military. Poker faces are required to be part of the military. So I don't get it, but I'm, I'm, I'm not going to interrupt anymore. I'm not going to interrupt anymore. Just know I'm back here. Well, I might interrupt. Let me not lie to you guys. I, I might. 
We're on a constant roller coaster ride of helpless and hopeless and many other emotions all in one. And it's a never ending roller coaster. It doesn't stop. It won't stop until he walks through the door. I wouldn't wish this on anyone. Not anyone. Hey, crazy bunch. I know Bulls. we're about keeping hope alive. Nice to see you, I'm Bobby. Sure that's in there nice somewhere. To see you. Oh, yeah. He's going to come home. He's going to walk through that door. <laughs> see, it's that right there. Okay, I told you I wasn't going to stop, and I stopped again. Here, look at this. I, got, I just can't get through this, okay? We're just going to have to deal with me. We're going to have to deal with me. Good heavens. Heavens to Betsy. It's Monday. It's Monday. So it's almost like they're convincing themselves that thing, the situation is going to be better in the end. That's what has me stumped. That's what's always had me stumped with this is that the, the image of them feeling as if this is going to be a better outcome than it was going in. And I just don't like Chris with all of this. You know, I think it's because I now have a major bias against Chris because of Nina's interview. Like whatever I had for Chris before is like amplified in, in, in on steroids a thousand percent because of the fact that um, he's just, he, he, everything is now skeptical in my mind when it comes to him. That's why, that's why. And this street will be flooded again with family and relatives all waiting to- Lori, it's nice to see you. Love it. Gamer, good morning. That boy's going to have more friends than he knows what to do with when he comes home. See, they're trying to convince themselves that this is going to be better. It just, I don't know. So here we are, eight days now searching for him. Walk us through that eight days. Sunday night. Now, I want you guys to consider this. This has been eight days, okay? I told you I wasn't going to stop it. I can't even get through the first two minutes of it. I know. God, God forgive me, right? God forgive me. I'm not trying to lie to y'all. I just, I'm a mouthy person, okay? Just stop it. I need some help over here. I need some help. Help me, Rhonda. Help, help me, Rhonda. Right? Um, but it, it to me, with with everything that they're saying so far, they're trying to embellish this, um, how things are going to be a lot different, how things are going to be better, and just putting this in the mind. I don't like their behavior in this interview. I really don't. Let's go back just a, can I go back just a little bit? Hold on. Let's go back. Okay. Love him and that boy's going to have more friends than he knows what to do with when he comes home. I don't, I, I still don't like that. I just don't like the way they said that. I don't know why it just never resonated with me. Well, So here we are eight days. Oh, that's what I was getting at eight days. So this is the way that, um, Katie Proudfoot and Chris Proudfoot has acted at eight days. So their child's gone. They don't know if their child ran away or whatever. You know, they're a little nervous. They're they're getting a little frantic, right? But now it's been over a month. Katie and Chris's behavior hasn't changed. They're no more frantic, no more concerned, no more, you know, outspoken than they were when this happened. As a matter of fact, I went and looked at Katie's uh, 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 Facebook, no post. No post since like the, the 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 middle of March about her son. No post. She's on the news trying to convince everybody that they're doing everything they can to find their son, but they're failing to even explain other than they're searching for him, which we know that's BS because we have never even seen them outside of their house. They're hiding from everybody. They're not going out to look for him. They're not posting signs. They're not creating search parties. They're not getting their families together to do search parties. They're doing absolutely squat while they're sitting up here saying to everybody, we're looking for him. And then when Nancy Grace asked her, why did you leave? She's like, oh, he could be anywhere. You're right. He could be. He could also be coming home and you're not home waiting for him. I mean, there they, it, that could happen too. That's why you don't leave your freaking home. So now we are a month later, they're even more um, isolated. They're not out here helping. They're not out here crying. You don't see Katie on here like, like um, Seth is with tears strolling down her face, begging for her son, just wanting her son back. We learned on the Pascal show that it was actually Chris that wanted this boy out of his house. 
I got some clips for you. You're going to want to hear it. I'm starting to see the possible motive here. Is Katie Proudfoot the breadwinner of this house? You know what? Before we go, go back to this, maybe we need to talk about this because I did some research on this. And what I found was a little shocking. When I pull their public records information and I pull the details of their home, guess who the primary homeowner of their $600,000, almost $700,000 home is? Do you know? Guess who owns the house in first position? Katie Proudfoot. Is Katie Proudfoot the breadwinner of this house? And is she the breadwinner because the additional support that she gets from her son? Chris did not want, want um, Sebastian in that home because he really, in his delusional thought, thought he was getting his daughter. And he absolutely was disgusted by the thought of Sebastian being around his daughter. Sebastian was uh, you know, mentally challenged. He was becoming, he was getting into his hormonal stage. And his and 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 Chris didn't like him to begin with. And now he's concerned, like, oh, my daughter's coming here. So you know what Chris did? Chris approached. Now I wonder, everybody's thinking that Katie's the one that set Chris up to do this. I think it's just the opposite. I think it's Chris that told Katie, I can't deal with your son anymore. I think it's Chris that reached out to the father to find out if he's willing to take his son back. So it would open up a way for Chris to have his daughter because for whatever reason, he's got to, he can't just say he's the reason why he can't have his daughter. He can't say that. It's got to be someone else, right? So it's Sebastian keeping him away from his daughter. So if it's Chris pushing the fact that Sebastian needs to leave the home, so much so that he actually reached out to Seth to say, hey, I need you to take your son back. And then we find out that Katie Proudfoot's the breadwinner. So, what say you? Moda is starting to develop here. And you know who the, the, the person of this development is? Yours truly, Chris Proudfoot. So now, Let's go over the information we have. Now, I don't know if, if, if Katie knows anything. Because you know what? To be honest with you, Chris looks like a sneaky mf -er. He looks like the kind of guy that would sneak in his house, injure a child while his wife is asleep so she doesn't know. Remember, he's a smart man. He's in the military. He knows in situations like this, the only person you can trust is yourself, right? Could he have been on the phone with Katie that night, knew when she went to bed, know how, because she's lived with her, know how long it takes her to get settled in, sneak in the house, hear the bop, drag him out, off he goes? Or could it be somebody else? Because I looked at the body language of Seth when he was on, I can't remember if it was the Pascal show or T Rev show, but he uh, says something, somebody says, oh, so it's confirmed that uh, Chris was in Memphis. That weekend, and when when Seth looked at it, he raised his eyebrows like, "No, that's not what I'm saying, but that's what I need to say." And I'm like, "Hmm, interesting, interesting." So I do personally, me personally, I see a um, a motive developing, and the motive is Christopher Proudfoot's custody hearing and trial. He actually thinks he's going to get full custody of his daughter and he needed to get his problem out of the way so he could have full custody of his daughter because he wasn't going to let anything come between him and the custody of his daughter. Because remember, Chris did not want to pay Nina child support. <clears throat> he wants to do anything but pay that lady child support because he's a controlling, domineering, power-hungry freak. And if you don't like him, he's going to show you who's boss. He's going to let you know how powerful he is. He's going to do sneaky stuff, like have you come over to Tennessee so he can concoct something to steal the kid so he doesn't have to pay you child support. So I really think the motive in all of this is Christopher's custody hearing 
in trial. I feel like this is a this is this whole situation is almost an Alec Murdoch type of situation. Because now he's got sympathy, or he was at least hoping to have sympathy of the courts. I don't think he wanted to go to trial to find out he's not getting custody of his kid. I have no earthly idea. None whatsoever. None whatsoever. You know? Let's keep going. All right, now I'm not going to touch now I'm not going to touch it. Yeah, I will. You know, I can't I can't control myself. So, let's just keep going. We still have 20 more minutes. <laughs> now searching for him. Walk us through that Sunday night that he went missing. So, walk us through. We've got so many people who really want to know, okay, how did this happen? So, kind of just walk us through that night. Um, we were out and about that day. We were having a really good weekend. Um, okay. And here's, <laughs> I know, let me, let me let it play. Here's another thing I learned. Seth says he saw, listen to this. And I have a problem because, you know, law enforcement, they only give you little bits here, little bits there, little bits here, little bits there. They never show you their whole hand, even as a victim of a crime. They never show you their whole hand. And Seth, he didn't get the interior right? He didn't get the interior of the restaurant shot, which they must have an interior shot because cameras are all over these Texas roadhouses, right? They have them over by the, the register. They have them at the bar. They have them out front where you're walking in. You know, they have these cameras, yet the only camera footage that we learned that they showed, uh, Seth and Katie, was the one where Sebastian and Katie are walking out of the restaurant. Now, we heard that they were out there with the aunts, uncles, aunts, and, and cousin or whatever, having dinner. You know, it was very, like, her story just gets a little more vague and a little more confusing. So I really don't know if she's been implying that the, the aunts and the cousins were out to dinner with them or not. But they were introduced in this Chronicles of Olivia um, interview. And, of course, the two aunts were added in the um, uh, Nancy Grace interview. So we're kind of getting this stuff piecemeal. But one of the things that I found out from Seth is he said he didn't that Seth or that Sebastian didn't look like his upbeat, jovial self that night. So there was already a chip on that child's shoulder that probably got worse as he went home. There was something not right. Seth did, appears to think that, you know, he wasn't his upbeat, happy self. She's implying they had a great weekend. But 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 Seth is saying, wait a minute, you know, that he didn't look really all that happy when he was leaving. We'll get to that. We'll get to that. All right, now I'm done. At least for another two seconds. We got home. Uh, everything was pretty normal. He was playing in his room. Um, when I told him to go to bed, he did. <laughs> um, he said, good night, Mom. I love you. Um, Say good night to his puppies. Um, a little bit later, I wound up going to bed, and um, when I woke him up for school, he wasn't there. So, in your mind, what, that's usually around what time? So, when do you normally wake him up? Around six o'clock. So, were you instantly thinking something's wrong, or were you like, he may just be already in the shower, in the living room? I took a second and walked through the house looking for him in case he'd gotten up and was trying to get breakfast or something because he did that sometimes. Um, about three minutes in, give or take, I was on the phone. With and my so now you can like, start hey. seeing the, I can start seeing the scratches um, right here, right here. I can start seeing this. Oh, you guys, can you guys can see me right here? Oh, that's uh, Dixie, Kentucky girl. It's nice to see you, love. Thank you. God bless you. 15 months. Holy smokes. Nice to see you. Thank you for your love and support. He said, what do you mean you can't find him? I said, he's not in the house. And so at that point, is that when you call 911 or what's going through your mind? She, while we were on the phone and I was, I was like, is he on the other side of the bed? We, the normal places he may be in the house, you know, he wasn't. So I was like, okay, well, hold on a minute. And immediately after that, we called the sheriff's department.
Immediately after that, we called the sheriff's department. Okay, well, according to this timeline, there was no driving the neighborhood. There was no driving to the school. I mean, they immediately called law enforcement. She calls them at six and somehow immediately for them is 6.33 in the morning. So 33 minutes is immediate for them. Mm -hmm. Major report. I and ran all over the house, outside, inside. I looked outside, in every closet. Outside, inside, I looked in every closet. Still nothing about her leaving the home, nothing about her driving the community, nothing about her going to the school. Immediately called law enforcement. I just want to make sure that this is clear, folks. When minutes they were here. And in minutes, they were there. Here we go. So you said you were on the phone with her. So you hear how he said, like, here we go. Like, here we go. Like, he was prepared for this. Look at his face when he said, yeah. okay, here we go. Responded within minutes. and Here we go. So you said you were on the phone with her. So you were not home. No, ma'am. Okay. I, was, I was at work. I'm a tower crane operator. And I was working in Memphis at the St. Jude Project. So it's, you know, I have an earpiece in that talks to my phone. I have another earpiece in that does the radios. So when she was talking to me, I was like, what? I was confused. We talked about where he could possibly be. And then we went from there and led to calling the cops. And here we are now. And within minutes, they're there at the home. Still no That's driving right. or leaving the home. It was rapid fire. They had cars. They, they had cars from here down to the to the main road, road, as far as I could tell. So what's going through both of your minds? I mean, are we panicking? Is it this, oh, I think he's probably at a neighbor's house, or what are you thinking? My son doesn't run. He's not a runner. He's never run away before. I keep wondering if, if for any reason, Seth Rogers was not so heavily involved in his son's life, if this story would be much different than it is, because we have to remember Seth is involved in his son's life. So they have to be as truthful as, as they can, because Seth will call them, you know, will call them out. So she knows that her son wasn't the run, a runner. He, she can't say her son <clears throat> was a runner. I don't know. Um, I don't know why. I don't know why he walked out that door. I mean, he's a good kid. He's not, he's not a mischievous child by any means. Um, but there's answers to questions that have no answers, you know, or questions, excuse me, questions with no answers right now that we are searching for desperately. And we just don't have that. Is there anything that happened that day that you think back and th there might have been a reason he was possibly upset or something outside that could have enticed him to go outside? Was there anything that came to mind? We've been combing over that day and even the weeks before he left and I don't, I haven't been able to figure it out. He's, um, that morning he was laughing, he was joking. Everyone we were around that day agreed that he seemed like he was in a good mood. He was behaving. But Seth said he didn't look like that. He was in his jovial self when he was leaving the restaurant. So I don't understand why she doesn't seem to think her son uh, was in a funk when he got home. Hmm. Interesting. It'd make more sense if we'd been fighting. Or he'd been in trouble, but he wouldn't have been in trouble. How do we know that? Because they say so. Something. The million dollar question, why did he go? And the other million dollar question is how. See how they're putting it off on him. They were just, I feel like they, <clears throat> who else kind of feels like they were just hoping this would have been uh, just a teenage, you know, child missing. You know, they think the child just ran away. It was not going to be this big a deal. Like, I feel like they didn't expect this to blow up. Um, the way it did, I feel like they, they didn't think that this was going to be taken as seriously as it was taken and with as much vigor as it was taken with. I, I don't know. I mean, I just have these uneasy feelings and every time I watch this stuff, I always get more questions than I do the answers that I'm seeking. So I don't know. 
but I think I found the motive. That, you know, anyone he could have contacted, understand he was somewhat of a gamer or what was he, there was a video game he loved, right? <laughs> Minecraft. Yeah. He loves Minecraft. Um, the, the game that he has is not online. He has the, the, um, switched. Um, he's, we don't, because of how social media can be, he doesn't have accessibility to communicate with folks on the internet. On internet. I mean, I, we have a firm belief that we just don't feel it right now that he's capable of having that kind of responsibility. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, he, his phone is locked down, his computer. But he has the responsibility of taking care of a snake all by himself. Um, and gets his snake taken away from him because he can't take care of it by himself. So even Chris Proudfoot knows he's not responsible enough to take care of a snake, won't assist him with a snake, but decides to get rid of his favorite pet snake. I think that's a little barbaric, but I digress. Computer is his game. He doesn't have a gamer tag. He doesn't have online capabilities with games. Um, I mean, we've, it, um, we've combed every electronic, every electronic. I mean, we've cooperated with all the authorities as far as anything they've asked us to provide. We've provided and still just don't have any answers. Did he have any friends that could have possibly contacted him in some way on his phone? All his friends at school have been questioned to my knowledge and none of them knew anything. With this big question mark. He's vanished. No one can figure out where or why. Um, all right. So let's talk to about the relationship involved because they're, the biological father is very much involved in Sebastian's life as well. Yes, ma'am. Very is. much. Right. Um, and, and how would you describe that relationship, the two of them and the four of you? It's relatively good. I mean, we talk regularly. Uh, <clears throat> Chris is... Chris, excuse me. Chris's face is not agreeing with her. I don't know. This is the first time I heard this. Let me go back again. In some way, on his phone. All his friends at school have been questioned to my knowledge and none of them knew anything. With this big question mark. He's vanished. So the kids from school have been questioned. That was one of my theories is did somebody from school possibly coax him out of the house? And this was just a um, prank that went terribly wrong. But they just eliminated that possibility in this interview. And this is the first time again that I've heard it. Thank you, Alabama mom of four. Yes, we, we crossed over our $25,000 or 25,000 member mark. So um, if you guys have not thought to subscribe, please consider subscribing to the Bullhorn Betty channel. Uh, here and on our, across social media platforms, TikTok, Instagram, Twitter, um, Facebook. I think that's about it. <laughs> no one can figure out where or why. Um, all right. So let's talk to about the relationship involved because they're, the biological father is very much involved in Sebastian's life as well. Yes, ma'am. Very is. much. Right. Um, and, and how would you describe hey, that Betty. relationship, the two of them and Morning, my love. the four of you? It's relatively good. I mean, we talk regularly. He talks to his son on a regular basis, sees him on a regular basis. He's involved in school and therapy. And um, I mean, he doesn't have any extracurricular activities, but I can tell you now, if he did, he'd, his dad would be in the front row. Um, Sounds like his dad's a great dad, huh? She even acknowledges how great and involved his dad is. We love we love Seth. We love Seth. What a great dad. And you know what? It even breaks my heart to know that these people here aren't helping. They're not helping Seth. Why? Why? I just don't know. In two different households. And the communication between the three of us is, is great. I mean, yes, we're just like every parent. The communication between us is great. How did we go from great communication to uh, Katie and Chris having absolutely nothing to say to Seth at, at all of a sudden after the kid disappears? You would think that they would be like the Riley Strain family where 
uh, step parents and mom and dad all come together for the sake of their children. And the minute that this child disappears, Katie and Chris stop talking to Seth. How does that happen? Doesn't make sense. Doesn't make sense, guys. We all have our disagreements, but in the end, we come together as a team and we work. Really? Come up with solutions. Where's the solution on this, fit. Chris? I mean, he's, I'm almost in contact with him almost daily. Um, so why let's... is Chris in contact with him almost daily and not Katie, the mom? Is it because uh, Chris doesn't trust his wife to talk to another man? I, I mean, I'm just curious. Let's talk about Sebastian. Tell me about Sebastian. How would you describe him? I agree. Sweet, stubborn. <laughs> um, he loves to help. He loves uh, running. And he loves to play his games and his fidgets and um, Uno. Lord, that's one of his favorite games right now. Um, favorite color is green. Um, Does he love music? Oh, God, oh, he loves music. An eclectic taste. I mean, an eclectic. I mean, from, as, as everybody knows, Eye of the Tiger to... Ed eclectic, huh? Eddie Vedder. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So we got, we got Pearl Jam on one hand. We've got Survivor on the other over here. We've got Taylor Swift and... Um, He's got a big crush on her. <laughs> um, I mean, country rock. No, classic. we don't. We don't allow the hip hop. Well, he, he doesn't really well, get I into it. Why? Why don't you allow the hip hop, Chris? Chris, <laughs> why doesn't a man of you like like hip hop? Is there something wrong with hip hop? Is it a little too colorful for you? I'm just asking. I'm just asking. You kind of give me that vibe. You kind of give me that vibe. I'm just saying. It kind of gives me that vibe. But anyways. You mentioned he loved running. So did he love the outdoors at all? I mean, would something outside that was somewhat outdoorsy be enticing so, to him or pull him outdoors? He loves, like, when, um, when we were in California and the school had this lap thing to gain money. It was a fundraiser, and every year he was. I did this many. I laps. have no I idea. This many laps. I mean, I've got T-shirts where they would write on his back every time the kids went around. They'd mark a mark on the back, and they'd keep running. He just had marks all the way across his back. Um, he likes playgrounds. Um, he hates oh, yeah. being dirty. He, he hates being dirty. I want you guys to understand what she just said let's go back and listen to that i want you to listen to this because they're trying to convince us he walked out that door without shoes on and every year he was i did this many laps i did this many laps i mean i've got t-shirts where they would write on his back every time the kids went around they'd mark a mark on the back and they'd keep running he just had marks all the way across his back um he likes playgrounds um He's oh, yeah. being dirty. He don't like being, being dirty. dirty. So he doesn't like being dirty. He's autistic boy. Can you explain to me why an autistic boy that doesn't like being dirty and doesn't like dirt on his feet would walk out of his house without any shoes on into a dirty environment such as woods and other areas? Just doesn't make sense. He doesn't like dirt. He likes clean. He likes his, his bread. He likes his feet covered. What in the world is going on? None of this makes sense. Like they're telling us this story about their son and their son's behaviors, but none of his behaviors that they're trying to convince us are displayed in any of his past behavior. This is an autistic kid. They're not spontaneous. They don't know how to be. Doesn't make sense, guys. Just doesn't make sense. Yeah, he's not a he's not your tomboy style child where he goes outside and plays in the mud. He loves animals, but he's terrified. <laughs> oh, so so you mean he's not gonna go running out in the woods and go camping in the woods? Hmm. Interesting. Isn't that what you're trying to tell us he did? Hmm. Out of bugs. Oh yeah. <laughs> wow. Okay. I mean yeah. even a fly, and he's like, oh, <laughs> 
And um, let's talk too, because he's highly functioning. I know you all have described him as having a form of autism. He does. But des describe that to our viewers too, as far as his way of thinking of things and maybe how determined he was about certain things or his mindset. He, um... <laughs> he, he's got a stubborn mindset. If he believes it's this, he gets on a one man track and he is just yeah. on it and he is all about it. <laughs> um, but I mean, he's, he's very smart. He's I mean, he, he can play chess. He, he can beat adults in chess. Wow. So he's, he loves, he loves, loves, loves playing games. What about navigation? Like, did he have a sense of direction? Do you think he could have possibly even hitched a ride or gotten a ride on a bus or some sort of transportation? Somebody that doesn't like new experiences or new people or new things. I'd... That is a speculation that we don't have an answer for. Just I directionally, mean, he knows he could guide you from our house to his dad's house. Yeah. He could get from like this house. I think he can make it up to Culver's ice cream. He can go to Culver's. Oh, boy loves he knows malt. where Culver's <laughs> is because Culver's has malt. Uh -huh. He loves malt, extra malt. Every yeah. time, extra malt. Now, how far away does his dad live? Clarksville. His dad lives up by Clarksville. So he could guide someone all the way to Clarksville. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. Okay. So he knows so, how to get to his father's house. That was interesting that we didn't hear in the first interview because they cut it. But how do you think about that? Like, e even if he left his house and ran away from home, he knows how to get to his dad's house to, Cl to Clarksville. So why isn't he? Why didn't he go to his dad's house? A pretty keen sense of direction, at least with certain things. Uh, if, Familiar routes. Yes. Familiar routes. Familiar routes. I mean, if I took him another route going he this way, he would it. not know. He goes up there so often that he knows he knows how to get to his daddy's. We know that. His dad works with him as far as well. We're going this way. We're going that way. And <laughs> I got Lori Lowe's dogs barking. Well, hello, woofers. I am Bullhorn Betty, and I am who you are barking at. Woof, woof. Keeps the same thing, and it works out. So, um, Let's talk, too, because earlier... Chris, you and I were talking and you were saying that there are a lot of people who are harassing both of you. What of any of that do you want to address? What, what do you want to say to any of these people? Just that you don't know. And I don't wish you to ever know. We're kind of getting a clue, babe. I would say it like this. Everybody has an opinion. You know, it, and it's perfectly okay to have that opinion, but you're not in this situation. You don't quite understand. Um, I wish people would step back, take a different wide open view. I can promise you, Chris, Mr. Proudfoot, I did step back and I did take a wide open view. And um, you chose to worry about me and put me in your mouth, right? I did step back. I did give you guys a fair shake. But you're so concerned about me and what I might find that it makes me a little concerned. Because people usually avoid me that are guilty. Just saying. And not assume what they know. It's just better to stick to the facts. We have. If they have questions, all they have to do is ask. We have. And I pray genuinely that no one ever goes through this. And we do as well. Hey, Barbara. Nice to see Just you, be love. be kind to people. I mean, that's, that's real silly. Be kind to people. What kind of kind are you talking about? I mean, out of curiosity, the kind that, that means your mom starts chasing people down with her car? Is that the kind, um, uh, kind behavior you're seeking? Um, are you seeking the kind behavior uh, where people are harassing people walking down a sidewalk on a public street, on a public sidewalk? Is that the kind of kind behavior you'd like to see? Just asking. I'm curious. I'm personally curious what he means by kind behavior. Be kind to each other because he hasn't been kind to us. 
He hasn't been kind there to his There are some people children. who have been talking because I know this is part of the harassment. Um, is there anything you want to address about this child custody situation? The previous. So I have a, a current case that is going ongoing in another state. Um, we've requested that case to be sealed because there are some individuals who have taken upon themselves to put stuff out there that they don't quite know. Oh, well, that was beginning. This is early on. Well, we know now because Nina came forward, buddy. So you can try to seal. Isn't it funny how he always tries to seal things? He reaches out to TBI to try to tell, coax TBI into telling people that they can't have interviews. And TBI comes out and says the family reached out to us and has requested us to tell the media not to give them interviews. It was really ridiculous. It shows who they are. Um, it, it just, his behavior just doesn't make sense. Which... All they have to do is ask. I'll tell and again, we have. You won't answer. Remember, I, 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 as met along with many other people, have asked you, what were you doing the night before he disappeared? And yours is the only one that's a state secret there, Christopher. So I don't know. We keep asking and you keep telling us that you can't talk about it. So there's that. I'll tell you. Um, but because of that, you know, it's, it has nothing to do with our son. It has nothing to do with the situation. Our son. You know. Was he really your son? Because so far, I'm still seeking any type of photography with you and Sebastian in it together. Like, have you? did you ever take him fishing? Did you ever take him bike riding? Did you ever take him and do things with him that fathers do with their sons? I mean, I'm just curious, Christopher, because you're telling us he's your son. But I know fathers, and fathers do things with their sons. They don't go and and get jobs hours away so they don't have to be a family man. Just saying. I just people would respect that and then keep an open mind. It's totally different. Is Sebastian is able to watch this, and maybe he's watching this as it airs. And if he is, what do you want to say to Sebastian? What do you want him to hear from you right now? Oh, gosh. That we love you so much. And we want you to come home. And you're not in trouble. Why would he be in trouble? Just curious. I guarantee you he is loved. And trust me, the open arms are waiting for him to come home. Yeah, I just From every yours. parent to every family members to probably everyone in the community. But there's no malice. We just want our boy home. That, that. They want their boy. They want their boy home so badly. They want their boy home so badly that they won't even get their asses up to search for him. That's how badly they want him back. But that mama's heart. I know it's daddy's too. But I feel like there's always that extra special bond. Yeah, Katie, we need you to find that extra special bond and we need you to start taking the um, blinders off your eyes and and then rethink your story and and then give us a new story. Can you walk us through what you're thinking right now? I just want my baby to be okay. I don't know where he's at. I don't know where he's at. Let's talk about the community because I want you all to know, even, even my church body, I mean, we're all praying, we're all praying for his safe return quickly. What do you all want to say to the community? Thank you. With everything from the bottom of our hearts. So she said, thank you. With everything from the bottom of our hearts. Well, it doesn't sound like you're thinking us now, now that we've been out there and we've actually done some investigative work it sounds like you guys aren't really pleased we i would not have imagined how far this has gotten but there's no way to repay our gratitude the love that we have felt from the community the prayers but thank you but from don't the stop the looking yeah, please my son is yeah don't stop looking we'll stop looking katie and chris will stop look oh no they won't even look at all They'll, they won't even look, but we, the public, shouldn't stop looking, you know. Uh, well, we'd like you to help out just to 
<laughs> just saying for a few friends, we'd like to see your asses out there helping too. Just saying. Looks pretty disrespectful that you have everybody else out there searching for your son that you say you love and you miss and you want to come home, but your asses still haven't been out there. Haven't even been out there. Haven't stood side by side next to the stepfather. They have such a great relationship with nothing. Interesting. That makes sense. This ain't over until he's home. So we have, let's, well, let's think, mention, yeah. let's hit on the, the search itself because we know thousands of miles have basically been traced and retraced. We've got hundreds of, We've got volunteers, we've got law enforcement from within the state and without, you know, outside of the state. Um, I mean, do you feel like they're doing as much as they can? I mean, you, you've been, you all have been right there in the front seat seeing everything that's, that's underway. As far as I know, they're doing everything. Anything and everything has been an option. They have brought in assets and resources from various counties, potentially other states. I mean, I don't know how much more they could do, but we're grateful for everything they have done. They're amazing, but they still haven't brought my baby back. They will. They will. They will. Like that reassuring thing. Like he, he's, I, I don't know why I'm getting the vibe that he snuck into the house that night unbeknownst to anybody. He's the one that wanted Sebastian gone. He's the one that didn't want Sebastian. Mom and dad are heavily involved in Sebastian's life. There's only one third wheel here that doesn't like stepchildren. And that is Christopher Proudfoot. If you guys received your Bullhorn Betty gift membership this morning, please don't forget to tell Sonia, our beautiful Sonia, thank you, thank you, thank you. He's out there somewhere. So it's basically, it's one day at a time getting through this and bringing him home. What is the reaction to the fact that somehow he, his, his image, he hasn't been captured on any video anywhere? I know that it was very dark that night. I mean, it gets dark around here at night in general, but um, so far, we haven't found him on any camera footage to prove where he's at or where he's gone. I know that they're... They can't even find a, a footprint or a scent of where he's at or where he's gone, which I find a little odd. Looking, and I'm asking everybody and anybody that has cameras, trial cams, mm -hmm. stores, um, <clears throat> to check even from before he went missing, just to see if there's anything at all. And I understand there, there was a request for video, any sort of footage of Sebastian from earlier in the day on Sunday before he disappeared. That I don't believe we can comment on right now. I don't, that is not something that I believe we're pervy to. Uh, law enforcement, when they're looking for images and videography for certain time frames, that's definitely something you could be commenting on because law enforcement wants those items to be sent to them. So, again, don't understand this response. At this point, with law enforcement, that is something I would, I would definitely direct back to them. But, I mean, they, there's hey, all Carla. kinds of requests out there. There's thousands of hours of video that they are combing and... We're just hoping they'll find something. And I know this is so sensitive. What do you say to people who inevitably, inevitably end up pointing their finger back at you? We were talking earlier. And, I mean, are you both in the clear? I can tell you that mom, myself, and the father have worked very fully and cooperatively with all agencies across the board. We have... Anything that they've wanted, we have provided. Um, so cooperation is there. I mean, he keeps going back. She asked him questions, and he, he she keeps going back. He keeps going back to how they're being cooperative. How they're being cooperative. That wasn't the question she asked. I, I don't notice notice if you noticed that or not. He's not answering the question. He's answering the question he wants to answer, not the one that's being asked. Say to our viewers, 
anybody who's watching, we've got a lot of folks in this community and in other counties just throughout the state as well. What do you want to say to them? Help spread the word and keep searching and thank you. And um, just if you think you see him, call him in. Which thank all the viewers, everybody that's helped from across the board. I mean, well, uh, Chris, are, are you telling Bullhorn Betty, thank you for helping? Well, I appreciate that. I didn't think you liked me like that, but uh, who knew? Who knew? Um, all joking set aside, it's just now they're getting down here in the weeds. I'm sorry. I, the more they talk, the less I believe them at this stage in the game because nothing they're saying makes sense or is um, equated in reality at, at all, except a few details that they're saying here. I mean, everybody has been tremendous. Call his name. Yeah. He'll answer, and if he doesn't answer, he'll at least, he'll look, even if he's not being verbal at the moment, because he can talk, but sometimes he don't talk. <laughs> um, call his name. Tell him to stay put. Well, people have been calling his name for over a month now, Katie. Um, he's not in the area. He doesn't have friends, so he's not over at friends' houses. Um, he only has a small network of people, which is his family, and he's disappeared, and nobody can explain it. So how do you explain this? And he could be on the move, so keep checking your properties. Yes. I, the search is never over until he comes home. That is it's for sure. so smart. But thank you for everything that everybody has done, has volunteered. Uh, the continuous efforts. I mean, it, it's like I said, this is, I've never seen something to this magnitude before. I've never made. saw something to this magnitude before. I don't, I think that that is the truth, most truthful thing he said. He does, he, I don't think he expected this. And I think this is the problem is that you never know. Whenever something like this happens, you never know. If you short, if you draw the short straw, straw or the long straw, they drew the long straw. The whole world is looking at them, and they weren't expecting. They've never seen anything like this before. Most people don't. Most people don't have kids missing, and when people have kids missing and didn't have anything to do with it, and they walk out the door, they're usually found fairly quickly. But this one is 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 perplexing because it's been a month, over a month, and nobody has seen this boy since the day he allegedly walked out when he will he doesn't like dirt and and left without shoes. It doesn't make sense. And whether or not those those scratches on Chris's arms are from the dogs or not, let's face it, he's the only one that has any type of injuries on his person since the day that the Sebastian disappeared. Doesn't make sense. This is the only um, timeline that we're that's so top secret that we can't know about it. He's trying to convince the world he was so far away. There's no possibility of him doing it. Yet his is the only timeline that can't be known. Doesn't make sense. They haven't been out searching. They haven't posted flyers. We have not gotten one video from anybody showing them out and about except eating at restaurants since their son has disappeared. Those are the only outing photos we get of these two people. Why? Why are, is that the only time they go out of their home? Is to eat, but not to search for their son that they say that they love so much and want to come home. Not even one search you could be involved in. They say that they they have such a great relationship with Seth that they talk to him almost every day, but all of a sudden they stop all communication with him. Doesn't make sense. I know a lot of people out there are saying, you guys should quit pointing the fingers. At I'm not pointing the fingers at anybody. They're causing the fingers to be pointed out uh, at them all by themselves. All by themselves. Nobody's doing this to them. Oh, thank you, Virgo. God bless you. Nobody's doing this to them. Do you I got better things to do with my stinking time than point my finger at innocent parents and blame them for their child missing. I got a hell of a lot better things to do, and so does everybody else out here on YouTube. 
and other social media platforms. Let's cut it out. We don't sit there and say, oh, we're going to pick on these parents today. Let's good grief. Good grief. Things don't make sense. That's why we're honing in on them. Because we have this knack where the true crime genre of these social media platforms, and I'm sorry, our nose Smith smell bull, you know, a mile away. And we're sniffing a bunch of cow dung right now. It doesn't make sense. I'm not going to sit here and appease Chris Proudfoot and try to pat him on the back and say, attaboy, when shit don't make sense. Excuse my language. All my religious folks out there. I'm right off a of Easter holiday. What a great service. I, I don't know if you guys know. I went to two services uh, Easter weekend. I, I felt the need that I needed a little extra dose of God. So I went to the Saturday service. So I actually had a sneak peek of what we were going to see on Sunday. So we have all these phenomenons going on with Chris and Katie and people not really believing their story because they keep changing their story. They keep changing their story. Let's hear. We already know now from that first interview. We finally got to see the entire interview. And again, once again, I don't know about any of you, but I have more questions than I do answers after that. So then we go over here to um, Chronicles of Olivia's interview with the Proudfoots, you know? And we're wondering, what's what say you with this whole situation with the Proudfoots? What was their story now? Now, this first story at day eight, when these people were uh, just, you know, Sebastian had been gone only for eight days. And they are saying that, you know, she got on the phone. Uh, they were on the phone immediately. Uh, Chris tells her to look here, here, here. Within three minutes, they're calling law enforcement. But that does not bode with the timeline because Katie says she woke, she went in there to wake him up at 6 a.m. Her story is within three minutes, 6.03, she's on the phone with her husband. And he's saying he's got her going here, here, here around the house looking for Sebastian. And then they immediately call 911. So you would assume probably by maybe 6, 10 in the morning, they would be calling 911. But the problem here is the call didn't come into the dispatch center until I think it was like 6.33 or something like that. So what happened to the other 23 minutes? Well, hmm, interesting. Now they got to fix that. They got a 23 minute window. What did she do? Let's see. Now that she's talked to law enforcement, law enforcement's breathing down their neck. Uh, they've already told their statement to the world. And now we got another person following up with that very statement and it's Chronicles of Olivia. Let's hear. I went to bed. Um, he was doing something in his room because about an hour later I heard some noise and I was like, I don't care what you're doing in there, but go to sleep. And I just want to remind everybody that, you know, when we talked to her earlier, she said she had no problem getting her son down to bed. He went to bed. He went, remember that? He went right to bed. <laughs> and um, about midnight, I got up and I went to bed. And um, six o'clock, I went to wake him up for school Monday morning. And that's when he wasn't here. That's when he wasn't here. Just wasn't here. Remember, like uh, Don and Candace says, she was just gone, gone, gone. She's just gone. What was going through your mind at that point? Like, What were the feelings that you were feeling? To censor myself. Holy freaking crap, this can't be happening. Where is my kid? Would you be having those immediate terrifying experiences waking up first thing in the morning and your kid not being there? I just don't see that being my very, like, I'd be immediately terrified in 30 seconds that my kid's not here. Like, especially in a house the size of theirs. It, I don't know. Choice words were used. Um, like, you know, where the F is he? You know. um, I had called my, I had looked through the house for him it was typical for him to get up and come and rummage for snacks and things like that and he likes to dip behind the you know walls so so she knows this about him so why would her immediate reaction at 6 a.m be complete terror that he's not there doesn't make sense watch you know and um 
and then he comes out after I come back and he likes to scare me. <laughs> but um, after I looked, and I mean, mind you, all of this took place in like one minute flat, but um, I didn't see him in his room. I looked all over, I ran through the whole house. I looked out all the doors and windows and I was like hollering his name and um, I picked- Much up. different than the story she originally said. Could we just watch that? And she said that she, within three minutes, she's on the phone with her husband. Her husband's telling her to look here, look here, look here. And they immediately, I even stopped it and rewinded it. And they immediately called law enforcement. That was their original story. So I wanted to call my husband and I said, um, I can't find him. And he said, what do you mean? I said, he's not in this effing house. I can't find our son. And um, I like, I jumped in my car and I drove around the neighborhood and I drove over by the school. That wasn't what she said in her first interview. So she's not keeping the interview. She's not keeping the information the same at all. At all. And where is the other one? And then we hear from Nina. They had warned me. They had said, Nina, be careful because Christopher is coming up with a plan with his mother. And they're planning on taking the baby away from you. And I was like, what? Like, thinking to myself, it can't be true from somebody that's supposed to love you, right? Like somebody that you're supposed to share your life with. Like, why would he want to take the baby away from me? Because he didn't want you to have the child support because he's a control freak that wants to show you how powerful he is. And she warned me. But I was like, no, why would they do that? Hey, Miss Robin. So then after Faith got out of the NICU. Um, we so this is the day that she's she gave, gives birth to her child, the child that Chris Proudfoot did not want. She wanted to, her to get rid of the problem and she didn't want to. And so she had the child. Now he is concocting a way to take that child that he did not want away from her. And this is while she's still in the hospital after having major surgery and just giving birth to a baby. And we all know that hormones and emotions kind of um, just flood in for a woman that just had a child. We know about postpartum depression and other things like that. So <clears throat> you can imagine what this woman was truly going through for those of you that experienced that. We were no longer staying in an, um, base housing. We were staying at one of the NBC suites down here. Or, um, then his uh, mom came up with an idea. She goes, well, since you guys, you know, we'll be moving to Hendersonville. And I was like, ah. we kind of, I, I felt like, okay, well, maybe. And he's like, well, you'll get help. You're going to get help from my family. And, you know, but I was already getting help here from my parents, you know, with my other two children that they helped me raise. So that I went along with it. Like you, like I said, I get back to the apartment complex and I pulled into the parking lot and I see Melissa just like, just pulled in right next to me. It seems like they were already there waiting for me to get there. And then she said, I can't stay. I would love to stay, but I can't stay because I don't know what they were doing. And she does, you know, my son gets out of her van and then we walk inside and I was waiting, you know, for Faith to get there. And we weren't there, but less than maybe five minutes. And I hear a knock at the door and I was like, oh, great. Faith is home. And it was Kathy's friend, Patty, that's an attorney. And she said, are you called me by my real name, Gomez? And I was like, yeah. And she said, you've been served. <laughs> she said, you have a protection order against you. You can't see faith. 
And Chris is filing for papers. And I was like, what? So then I go back, you know, and thinking like, like, like my heart just drops. Like, what am I? What? Like, is this a dream? Like, <laughs> this can't be happening to me. Like, this cannot be happening to me right now. <laughs> so then I get on the phone and I try calling Chris and he didn't answer. Her. And then I was like, you know, rushing around and I get my kids in the truck and I go to, I go to the Gallatin um, police department and I, you know, was ringing the call button and like finally 30 minutes later, somebody shows up and I told them what happened. That seems like a, a normal thing in, in Tennessee. They don't have uh, police stations that are manned, which is unusual again. Uh, for the people that are in Tennessee, you guys need to vote better. You need to start funding your police departments because this is causing a lot of problems in all of these cases that are being unsolved and not being able to be brought to trial. And I showed them the paper and they said, yep. We can't help you. All you can think about is my baby, like. How am I going to get my baby back? Like, why is this happening to me? And that's the Chris Proudfoot that they don't want us to know about. Right there. That's the Chris Proudfoot that they don't want us to know about. Guys, I want to tell you, thank you guys for joining me. Uh, we will be going down this realm of uh, possibilities related to the Sebastian Rogers case. I think this case stinks to high heaven. I think that um, there's a lot of there's a lot of explaining that needs to still be had. Uh, something happened, and we don't know what it is. But what is being told to us is not. I, I I truly don't believe is the truth. I believe more's there. And I have not been able to figure out, did Christopher Proudfoot at, act alone or did he act in concert with his wife? Or did they not act at all? And did Sebastian literally walk out of the home? It is almost unbelievable to me that Sebastian willingly walked out of that home. That's the problem I have, knowing everything that I, I have learned about Sebastian, about his condition about his behaviors, his mannerisms. Um, it just seems unbelievable for me. Yet here we are listening to these parents saying, now mind you, Katie's still not barely showing a freaking tear, not getting her fat ass. I'm going to say it like just like that. Forgive me, Lord, for saying it. But you know what? Sometimes effect is needed. She needs to get her fat ass up off that chair and out there looking for her son. We, the public, want to see their asses actually out there looking. We don't want to hear that you're looking. We don't want to hear that you're taping uh, signs to, to, to polls. We want to see it. Because to be honest with you, this girl right here ain't believing it. It ain't believing it. I ain't believing none of this dung. We want proof. We like receipts. We have gotten no receipts in 30 days that th that mom and stepdad have done squat except pony themselves up on, on in front of media and social media acting like they're doing everything they can to find their boy. But when we look under the hood, where the hell are they? Two military trained people sitting on their butt. While non-military trained people are out there searching for their child. Doesn't make sense. None of this makes sense. Yeah. Oh, that's not the first time. Remember, the only time we ever see the proud foots out is when they're eating. Put the fork down. Put some boots on. Get out there in the woods and search. Try that out for size. Okay. What's the purpose of eating? To give you nutrients and energy to do what? To go do whatever needs to be done. Okay. Well, you ain't doing it. But you know what? Bullhorn Betty's mean, right? 
Bullhorn Betty's mean. I'm just going to let Chris and Katie know. If you guys are trying to avoid Bullhorn Betty, it makes me wonder why. Makes me wonder why. Because I'm as truthful as truthful comes. And trust me, people love me. Why? Because when I get involved, I fight. I fight and I fight hard. I fight until there's no more fight left. I, I take the ball and I run with it until I can't run with the ball anymore. If you don't believe me, ask Layla Santanello's mother, Jen Santanello. She will tell you. I run until I can't run anymore. There's no new information on the Layla Santanello case. We need to find new information on the Layla Santanello case. But she was told the same thing and she works with me. And guess what? We fight. We fight for the victims. We move heaven or earth for the victims. So when you have a family that wants to avoid Bullhorn Betty, it makes you wonder why. I don't bite. I'm actually pretty good at what I do. So there is that. There is that. All right, guys, I want you to make it a great Manic Monday. Go watch your favorite people. Give me some information. If you guys hear something, if you read something about this case that might perk my attention or you want me to elaborate on it or investigate it, send it to bullhornbetty at gmail.com. Make sure you put in the comment section or in the subject section, Sebastian Rogers, right? We want to make sure that I can identify very quickly which ones need to be read related to the cases that I'm covering currently. Um, I, I know I've been re receiving a lot of new requests for new cases and, and I'm trying to get to new cases. However, right now I've got five active, I think maybe six active cases right now. The caseload is pretty intense. So it's not that I don't want to get onto new cases. It's just right now I physically can't. I can't add another case to my workload. Uh, right now we have enough cases for this channel to cover. Uh, we have a thousand times more cases, as we all know, because crime doesn't stop happening just because we can't cover it. And so there's a lot of victims out there. So I'm going to ask everybody, please get involved in your community. Stay in tune with the people there. And if you see something, even if I can't take a deep dive in, if you find somebody that's missing or needs some advocation, send me that with some links so I don't have to search. If I have to search for stuff when I've already had this heavy of a load, to be honest with you, I can't do it. So if you put together an email with a, uh, a like a, a thumbnail photo and some information about the case and just lay it out for me, I'll take two or three minutes and go over and advocate for that person. Um, but I just need your help to get a little more information coming to me. I, I get a lot of people saying, look into this case. <laughs> and that's it. I don't have time. I don't have time. So if you want me to advocate for your case, give me the information so it makes it easy so I don't have to spend a lot of time. And I'll put it up. Um, I want to get as many people um, advocation as possible because at the end of the day, we're we're the we're we're what where it's at, you know. We're the ones passing this information out, and especially these low profile cases, they're not going to get squat on mainstream media. So if they're going to get any type of advocation or any type of um, you know airtime, it's got to be social media. So make sure you send those to me, but just make sure you give me a little more information and a photo. A photo is key. It's something I don't have to go and hunt for. I can uh, really make something with it. So just anything that you can do to help would be great. And I'm happy to help you um, help your community and advocate for your missing or uh, victims of crime in your own community. Um, but that's kind of where we're at with this. And we just want, you know, we obviously want Sebastian to come home safe. But with all of the, this is the problem. It, it, it takes away our hope because we know we feel in our heart something bad happened and we're being lied to. And I think that's where it comes down to why we're so angry with Katie and Chris, whether or not they've done anything or not. It's because uh, we, we feel that something is not right. And instead of them just addressing what we're concerned about, they keep acting like we shouldn't be concerned about it. And that's not how we work. You want you came to social media for help. We're happy to help you. We want to help you. We want to bring your son home. We want to bring your son home safely. But when you start avoiding people, start hiding from people, start running away from people and, and not helping, everybody's looking and saying, this is not normal behavior of somebody that's been missing a kid for a month. You want to know how we know that? Chris and Katie, because this is what we do every single day. Every single day, we have victims of crimes and their families on our channel or covering them. 
And we see true victims of crimes and people and how they behave when they're missing their loved one. And we're not getting that from you. And if you want our perception of you to change, then you need to change our perception of you. It's really simple. All right, guys, you guys go make it a great day. Rock it out with your coffee beans out. If, if you don't know, please be fearless, right? Be fearless. If you see something, say something. An ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. And sometimes it's not an easy thing to do the right thing. But the right thing is what we need to do each and every time. Don't forget, we try to help people. Does that mean we help people? Sometimes we fall short, right? We're human beings. But what is in our heart? Our heart and soul is telling us to get off our butts and help. And that's what we do each and every day. I, I was sitting here watching or heard about this um, other Con I don't call them content creators, YouTubers, because they deal with the drama. And can you believe that they're, they're jealous that it took us almost 14 months to raise money for a $1,400 camera? They're angry with me because our audience sponsored a camera. Now, this is coming from people that supported a channel bullying me, harassing me nonstop, and then raising almost $70,000 because this person can't keep their mouth shut. And they're concerned about a $1,400 camera. Like, I feel like that is just BS on top of BS. And we are going to be getting that um, lens for that camera. The camera is beautiful, guys. We have a state-of-the-art piece of equipment um, that I really think is going to do us some justice once we get the lens for it, right? We're going to have some great content and great videos that are going to come from that. And it's going to be there for years to come. Like, this is some, some, some serious equipment. But it's the difference between us is we buy equipment that's going to help us out in the field, searching for people and bringing content to you, as opposed to just you guys paying me to hear me complain about somebody for eight, nine hours a day. I don't have time to sit here and complain about people. You know what I have time for? I have time each and every day to help. And that's what I try to do. Um, if I'm not helping, I'm working, right? And trying to find other ways to help. And so that's what I hope each and every one of you guys do. That's what I try to inspire in each and every one of you is to just do something different. You know, we don't have to be sitting silently by on the sidelines. We can be involved. We can be heavily involved and we can really craft different legislations and laws. Each and every one of us has that power to get out there and do good. Each and every day you get to wake up and you get to choose how you want to be because at the end of the day, you're the only person that controls you. If you allow somebody else to control you, that's on you. So God bless you. Have a great week. And don't forget the meaning of this. I'm going to say this week because we know we had our resurrection day yesterday. I know there's not everybody in my chat that's very religious and that's okay. We still love you. And I know you guys still love us. But the bottom line is, is we're here for a reason. And I really believe that the majority of us have been through hell in our life, right? We've overcome a lot in our life. And when we overcome that, we want to make sure that we give that back to other people. Like it's all about paying it forward and giving it back. And that's what I try to do. I try to show people that you can literally wake up tomorrow and literally change your whole life. If you guys knew my story and knew where I came from, you would understand how amazing and how much of a blessing it is for me to be here in front of you. Like I shouldn't be here. I'm, I'm utterly blessed. God thought I was worth saving. And because God thought I was worth saving, I'm giving back at every opportunity that I can. Because again, each single day that I wake up is a day that I was not entitled to. So don't take your days for granted, guys. I love you. I hope you have an amazing day and we will see you all real soon. God bless. As you wake up in the morning, you want to find the latest, greatest information about criminal cases and have an intuitive conversation about the suspects associated with these cases. Head over to the Bullhorn Betty channel on YouTube. Breaking news right here on the Bullhorn Betty channel. Welcome to the Bullhorn Betty Coffee Club. Enjoy your stay and enjoy your day.